Hello again. We're going to be learning mean, median, mode, range, and outlier. Not because I think it's terribly difficult, but we're going to use it for something called variance and standard deviation. And I really love this lesson, actually, because it gives me a chance to really interact with my students with it. And I seem to have an overwhelming amount of students that like to play basketball, so I always use that to try to get their attention for this one. And what I do is I say, oh, okay, I don't tell them what they're doing, but I have this uh, kind of uh, wicked smile on my face as I'm doing this, and I, I say, who wants to volunteer for this? And I, I have some volunteers, and then sometimes I don't. You know, students won't always volunteer. And I ask five students, uh, either by force or um, through volunteering, to pick a number, uh, one through five. And here are some examples that I might get. You know, a student's going to say, two. And I kind of smile, and they don't know whether they because I always associate a number with something, so they don't know whether to pick a low or a high from one to five. So I'll have another student that picks three, and then uh, and another student that picks, you know, like five, and then another student who thinks they can figure out what I'm doing, so they say, okay, five, and then my last student, you know, goes the opposite way and he picks one, and then I say, you know, this is a this is a scary and exciting lesson at the same time. I'm like, well, why is it scary and exciting? I'm like, it's exciting because we're going to learn so much. But it's exciting, it's scary, because I'm going to involve myself in this lesson. And what you don't know is, this is the number of points you score in a basketball game. I'm going to put in my contribution now. And I put in something like 74. And all of a sudden there's a chorus of boos, because, you know, they think that I over-exaggerated my skill, which I probably did, but I started laughing. And they don't really find it funny, but I always do. <laughs> which I think is cute in its own right. Now, what I tell my students to do when they're figuring out mean, median, mode, range, and outlier, and I don't put these lessons directly with each other, this is just precursor lesson. I tell them to arrange the numbers from least to greatest. So they do. They're like, okay, 1, 2, 3, 5, 5, and 74. And I tell them what we're going to do is we're going to compete me, uh, we're going to compute, pardon me, mean, median, mode, range, and outlier. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to start with Mean. And mean is actually the most difficult one. But once you get past it, it's pretty easy. So, in order to figure out the mean, all you got to do is just add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. So it's 74 plus uh, 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 84, 87, and yeah, that works out nicely, which is 90. And you divide by how many numbers there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 90 divided by 6. And I don't have a calculator with me, 15, 30, 45, 60, 70, but it's 15. Yes. So your mean is 15. That's all you do. You, take, you add up everything together, and you divide by how many numbers there are, and that's your mean. That's all there really is to it. Median uh, sounds the most like the word middle, so I always tell my students, well, think about it like that, and you're fine. And what I do is I say, well, figure out what the middle number is. And you have to write from least to greatest in order to do that. So you take off one from each side, bam, 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 bam. Now, if there was one number left, that would be your median. But if there's more than one number left, if there's two numbers left, what you do is you add them up, 3 plus 5. If you're going to do this in a calculator, you make sure you put parentheses in it. Because you're going to get it wrong if you don't put it in parentheses. And you divide by 2. Now, if 5 was the only number left after doing that, then the answer would be 5. But since there's two numbers, I add them up and divide by 2. That's 8 over 2. So your median is 4. Uh, going to mode. Mode is the number that you see the most. And there's a question that usually comes from this. They say, well, what happens if you see every number one time? Then there is no mode. Well, what happens if you see two threes and two fives, and everything else has one? Then the mode is 3 and 5. Uh, in this case, the number that you see the most clearly is 5. So your mode is 5. The number that you see the most is your mode. Your range is your highest number subtracted your lowest number. So that's your range. And your outlier, which always is a joke in my point, but nobody ever cares. I usually tell my students, in order to figure out the, lie, uh, the outlier, you got to look at which number doesn't make sense, which number is kind of throwing off the balance of everything. And I, you know, that's why I use these examples. I pick the number 1 through 5. My students pick this, and they say this. I put 74, like, kind of look. I say, well, you don't say that. What you do is you say, you get out of here, liar, or outlier. 
So your outlier is the number that skews your answers. Now, if, there, if everything's relatively close together, then you don't have an outlier. But if you have a number that uh, tends to destroy the mean, then uh, that's your outlier. Your mean, is, your mean average is 15, but that's actually not a good average because if you look at all these, they're pretty low. This one skews it up. I mean, it doesn't skew it. It raises it up tremendously. This median is actually much closer. It's representative of the rest of the team. Mode is not really representative. Uh, it's just the number that you saw the most. Range, 73 range, that's, that's, that's a lot to say the least. And 74 being your outlier skews your data. So we're going to use this to figure out central tendency standard deviation. Uh, well, that's pretty much a variance, I suppose, too. But standard deviation is much more important. With that said, have a good day for now.